What's happening guys? Welcome back to the channel. It is good to see you here again. So if you've been around video editing for any length of time, you've probably heard of keyframes and you might not be sure what's a keyframe, what does it do, how do I use them? I don't know, give me some info. So that's what we're gonna talk about in this video. It's gonna be keyframe basics, just your basic principles about what keyframes are and how to use them. But hey, if you're new here, my name is Jay and on this channel we talk a lot about DaVinci Resolve, a little bit of photography and even some gear stuff because everybody loves some gear stuff, right? So if you're into any of those, consider subscribing to my channel. All right, let's jump into this video. All right, guys, so jumping right into it, we're gonna be talking about keyframes today. And if you've been around video for a little while, you've definitely heard of keyframes. So what is a keyframe? It's basically a point that you set on your clip that says at this point, some parameter is gonna change. And what do I mean by parameter? It could be zooming in, it could be uh, moving a clip left to right. It could be animating a piece of text or other um, object on your screen. So there's a lot of different ways that you can use keyframes here in DaVinci Resolve. But I'm just gonna stick with the basics here. I'm assuming that you don't know what they are. You don't know how to use them. And I'm just gonna show you some basic tips on how to get going with the keyframes. And of course you can always get more advanced and there's lots of cool stuff that you can do but I'm just gonna go over some basics here for you to get you going. So when we jump into Resolve here, I'm gonna show you some keyframing on a video clip. I'm gonna show you some keyframing on an audio clip, and I'm gonna show you some keyframing on a piece of text and how we can animate that piece of text. So let's jump over into Resolve and I'm gonna show you how to use keyframes. All right, we're here in DaVinci Resolve and we're gonna go ahead and start adding keyframes to this sample clip that I have here. Just a random clip of some flowers. So where do we go to start adding keyframes? The first thing you want to do is find the spot in your clip where you want to add a keyframe. So in this example, let's just start with something simple. We want to do a simple zoom in effect here on our flower. So I want to start at this point right here. And to add a keyframe, you want to have your clip selected, come up to the inspector. And when you look at the inspector here, you're going to notice all these diamonds down on the right hand side here. Those diamonds are how you add a keyframe. So let's explain what they do real quick. So if you see there's a diamond right next to your heading here, so the transform category, all these items fall under transform. Well, right here we have a diamond next to transform. If I click on that, a keyframe will be added for each one of the items that is underneath the transform heading. And that can be good because maybe I wanna zoom and change the position and rotate it and do all these different things. I only need to click the button once. I don't need to go through and click all of these keyframes if I don't want to. Now, if you only need one or two of these items, maybe you don't need to click them all. You can just click the ones that you wanna use like this, and it'll add a keyframe for only those items. But in this case, I wanna add a keyframe for all of them. So I'm gonna go ahead and click this top icon here. And if you look at some of these other categories like cropping and composite and lens correction down here, you can see they also have diamonds. So now that I've added a keyframe to the clip, what's the next step? How do I make it zoom in? So now you wanna come ahead in your clip to the next point where you want your zoom to be complete. And one of the really cool things here is that once you set your first keyframe, regardless of what item you're changing, set that first keyframe, move ahead a little bit, and then just make your change here. And DaVinci Resolve will automatically drop the keyframe for you. You don't need to go and click the button for each uh, time you go to make a change. So let's just say I want it to be right there and then I want to zoom in. So I'm going to do 1.5 and zoom in like that. So now if I come back here and I play through my clip, you see we've got a nice slow zoom in on the flower. Okay, so that's great. So I can see I've got my zoom there, but where are my keyframes? What if I need to make an adjustment or move them? How do I do that? So you want to make sure while you're doing this that your timeline view options are set to this middle guy right here. And if you need to make the video track bigger or smaller, you can slide it right here, but you need this middle option check so you're gonna be able to see all our keyframes here. So once you got that set, come back to your clip and you notice there's two icons on the bottom right-hand corner of your clip. So if, let's take a look at the diamond one first. When you click on that, you see we've got the heading transform. And each one of these little points here is the keyframe that we added over here in the inspector. So for example, if I play through the clip, you're gonna notice when the Playhead hits this point, it's gonna zoom in until I get to this point, and then it's gonna stop and stay steady at that 1.5 zoom. So let's play through, you can see that. Now, if you need to move one of these points, all you have to do is hover over it, click, and you can drag it wherever you want. Let's say I wanna make the zoom a little bit quicker, so I'm gonna drag it back a little bit, and now if I play through it, you'll see that the zoom's a little bit quicker. So just for fun here, let's say when I get to this point, 
I want to uh, add another keyframe and I want to make something else change in my video clip here. So in order to add a keyframe here for the pitch, let's say I want to change that. I'm going to go ahead and click it once and I'm going to come ahead and make my change. So let's say I just wanted to do that. So now if I play through my clip, we got to zoom in and then it shifts like that. So if we look back at our clip here, when you look at these little dots, they're all the same. How do you know which ones are for what? So if you click on this little arrow here, it'll drop down a menu. Let's make this a little bigger so we can see better. And you notice now there is a title for each one of the items that we have a keyframe for. And because we set that initial transform keyframe at the top here, we had a keyframe for all the different items underneath transform. And if we move ahead, we can see that, okay, our zoom X and Y, there's a point right there. And then where I change the pitch, I move ahead and it's down here under pitch. So if you need to move any of them, you can open this menu up and you can just slide them to wherever you want. So when we play through our clip here, you can see the changes happen right at the keyframes. So that's how you would move your keyframe forward or backward along your timeline if you need to. So next we wanna take a look at the curved line here. If you click on that and you scroll down, it brings up a graph. So this graph is basically a graphical representation of what's happening to your video. And if you come up to this triangle icon here and click on it, you'll see we have all of the different items that we can have keyframes for. So in our example here, we're not using rotation at all, but we are using the zoom and we are using the pitch. So you can go ahead and check on whichever ones you're using. So that's only what you see down here in our viewer. And now if I play through my video, we have the zoom X uh, selected. You're going to see as the zoom changes, this line basically just shows us the change in a graph. So if I play through here, you'll see as it zooms, the graph goes up and then it stays steady at our 1.5 zoom. And if I wanted to see the pitch, again, I can come and select the pitch and you can see they're both there. So you can actually just click on them here if you need to, but you can see the pitch, watch it. And then the pitch changes as the line goes up and then it stays steady at what we set it at. So this just gives you a different way to look at your keyframes. And what's cool about this, if we click on the zoom here, if you wanna change things right here in the graph, you can. You can take your zoom and you wanna make your zoom higher, let's say, you can just drag it up. And this keyframe stays in the same point, but you're able to make changes to your parameters here. So instead of it zooming 1.5, I wanna to zoom to two, let's say. Or let's say I wanted to zoom out in the beginning more, I can drop that down a little bit. So if I play through, it zoomed out, zooms in more, and you can make a change like that. Just gonna go ahead and undo those, get back to where we were. So some other cool things that you can do right here in this view. Let's say I wanna select my point and I want my playhead to get right on there. How do I make the playhead get right on there? Well, you can do this and it should snap there if you've got your little uh, magnet icon on here. But let's say I wanna just jump to the next point. Up here, you've got a little button. You've got the keyframe button and a forward button and a back button. So if you click that, that'll jump to your next point or your previous point, depending on which button you select. Let's say I'm over here and I want to add another keyframe. You can go ahead and just click the keyframe and then it adds another keyframe under the zoom. So I can then, you know, maybe zoom this back out if I want to. So if I play through the clip, see we zoom in, we zoom out, and now we've got another keyframe added in there. Another cool thing you do is just click on your keyframe and drag it wherever you want. Maybe you want it bigger, you want to move it. This way is pretty much like a free transform. You move it wherever you want. But let's say I had it right here and I wanted to move it just to the right here. Well, if I just click and drag it, it's hard to keep it in the exact same spot. So if you wanna move this keyframe um, in a more precise fashion, you can use your shift key. So if I hold shift and click on the point, then you can see it goes straight up and down. It's not moving all over the place. Or if I grab it and hold shift, you can move right and left and have it stay in the same area. Sometimes if you wanna move the keyframe, it's easier just to drag it up here because then you know you're not gonna change any of the values, you're just changing the location of it on your timeline. So let's say you added a keyframe and oops, you didn't wanna put it there. How do I get rid of it? Well, you can just click on it to highlight it and hit your delete key and boom, that keyframe is gone. So the next cool thing I wanna show you here is how we can ease in and ease out this transition a little bit here. Because if we watch it, place through, okay, it just kind of jumps to zooming in and then just stops. How do we ease that transition a little bit? So if you click on your keyframe again, and you can try selecting these different options up here. So this option all the way on the right that's highlighted now says, okay, come in, make it a sharp change and a sharp change again. In order to ease that transition, you would select one of these different items. So you can select this one right here 
and then let's select my top one and we're gonna do this. And now you can see we have a little S curve in here. So that's gonna say ease into the transition and then ease out. So let's see how that looks. Okay, and you've got options here too to change how it eases. You've got a little handle there, you can click on that. You can make it change a little faster. So if I just drag those out a little and we play through the clip, you'll see it zooms in quick. You can even grab it and bring it up so it's gonna zoom in farther and come back. Let's go ahead and play that. So you've got lots of different options of how you can change things here. Generally, I would do a small S curve and that should be fine for your video clips. All right, so that's the basics of getting started with keyframes here and what you can do in this graph area as well as how to move the keyframes in this view right here. So let's just clean this up a little bit. Let's say I wanna get rid of my uh, change in pitch there. And I just wanna keep my zoom keyframes cause that's all I'm worried about right now. I'm gonna spread them back out a little bit and see how that looks here. All right, good enough. So now let's say that uh, after looking at this, now I don't like this and it zooms in too much. How do I go back and fix that? So I can come here and we can even do it from right here from the inspector. If I come to my zoom here and I wanna go to the next keyframe, which is right here. So if I just click this little arrow, boom, jumps me to the keyframe. Now I can just make this change. I'm gonna bring this back to, let's just key in 1.5 and that's where I want it to be. So now when I click on here, zooms in nice and easy and we're back to getting something decent. So that's how you can make a change. You've got a lot of different ways to do things here and it's just playing with it and figuring out what way works best for you and for your particular clip. So now let's say we wanna animate some text and we want it to come across the screen somehow and we want it to be animated. Well, to do that, you would use keyframes. So I've got a piece of text here. I'm gonna bring this guy on over and it says subscribe. And if you haven't subscribed, go on over and hit that subscribe button. All right, let's see how we can animate this subscribe. So right now it's just a static piece of text. It's just gonna sit there on the screen and not do anything. So if we select our clip and you look in the inspector here, you notice that we do have some keyframes uh, along some of these items here. So we can make changes to them if you want to. But in this case, we just wanna animate the video. I've already got the text looking the way I want it. And let's just animate like the location of the text itself. So I'm gonna click on video at the top here. And again, you can see we've got all our keyframes here. So I'm gonna to come to the very first frame here and I'm gonna go ahead and click my transform keyframe. And let's say at the very beginning here, I want my text off screen and then I want it to scroll across the screen. How do I do that? Well, I've got my keyframe set. Now I just need to pick where do I want that text to start? So I know I want it to start all the way over here off the screen. So I'm off the screen. So now where do I want the text to end up? Well, by the time I get all the way to the end of the text clip, I want it to be off the screen on the right. So now I'm gonna grab my position here and bring it all the way over. So it's off the screen this way somewhere. And I couldn't see it because I'm actually just off the clip here. But if I went back one frame so I could see it, I could roll this back here and there it is. So I'm just gonna make sure on that last frame, it's off the screen there. So now if I play through my clip here, you're gonna see, here comes my text, comes sliding across the screen and boom, it's gone. So quickly and easily, we just keyframe the position of that text to slide from one side of the screen to the other. So now what other kind of cool stuff could we do here? So let's say we've got our text. I want it to come here and I want it to stop there. So we've already got our keyframes selected and going here. So if I pick this and let's say I just wanna make this zero and then I want it to stay right where it is until I get to here and I'm gonna pick, make this zero. So now my text will slide in, it's gonna stop, stay, and then it's gonna go off the screen. So it's easy to go back and add in keyframes to change where things are happening. And let's just open up our little diamond uh, icon here so we can see what's going on. And you can see here, we've got our little icons here for the keyframes. So we look down here, we did do the transform. We started with a keyframe in the beginning. We added our two keyframes to make it stay put. And then we've got our keyframe at the end where it's gonna go off screen. If we watch it here, it stops, stays still, starts going again, boom, off the screen. So that's kind of cool. So let's say maybe once it gets to this point, I want something else to change. I want it to do a 360 spin. So all I have to do is come to that point and since I've already got my keyframe set, I can just drag all the way over to 360. And then let's say I want to come to the next keyframe here and then I want it to go back. So I'm going to drag this back to zero. So now when I play through, let's see what happens. My text comes rolling in and rolling out. 
So now you notice it was spinning as it came in. Why did it do that? I don't want it to do that, but it did. So why did it do that? Well, it did that because right in the beginning here, we did a keyframe for all of these items. So the rotation was set at zero when we made that keyframe. And because I just went over, and as I go over frame by frame here, you can see that rotation angle is changing because when I came and set a keyframe for the rotation right here, I changed it to minus 360. Well, in between the two points, it changed from zero to minus 360, which is why we had it spinning while it came in. So how do I make it not spin there, but spin once it gets to this point? Well, if I come to this keyframe and I just go back one frame by using the arrow on my keyboard, and I just change this back to zero, it should come in and then do a quick spin and then get going again. So let's see, all right, comes in, quick spin, and then it goes off screen. So now what if I didn't want it to spin that long? Let's say I wanted to change how long that rotation takes place. So I'm gonna click down this little arrow here, rotation, I see I've got down here, so I want it to go quickly through a rotation. So let's go here, play it again, text slides in. Oh, that was so quick, you couldn't even see it. So let's open that up a little bit, play through, quick spin, and boom, off screen. So that's how you can animate text or animate anything really that you want to bring on the screen. You just use the keyframes, you make your changes in the inspector or in either one of these two uh, icons here, the diamond or the graph. And then you're going to be able to just make the changes and make whatever you want to happen or animate, you can make that happen. Okay, so the last example we want to take a look at here is how to use keyframes on audio clips. So it's going to be very similar to how we added keyframes on both the text as well as the video clip. So let's say, for example, um, I want to add some keyframes to this clip because I want to change either the pitch of it, the volume, maybe uh, the EQ, whatever it might be. You've got a whole bunch of options of things you can keyframe. So select your clip. Again, come back to your inspector over here. And you notice here's our keyframes. So let's say I want to uh, drop the volume of this next little portion here. I can go ahead and click keyframe. And I'm going to move ahead. Let's just say I want that first one to be a little loud. And then I want it to drop down after that. So I'm going to lower it down. And DaVinci Resolve is automatically going to fade that music down when it goes from one keyframe to the next, which is kind of cool. So if I play through the clip, here's what we get. All right, maybe we should make that change a little bit more because it's hard to notice that. So I want to get back to this keyframe. How can I do it? A bunch of ways. You can drag your playhead over and it should lock onto it. You can come up to your inspector here and click this little icon and boom, it'll jump you right back to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and drop that down a bunch more so we can notice the difference a little more. All right, so let's play through. So you can see it lowered the volume down. Now it stays at that level until I maybe add another keyframe and bring that volume back up. So you notice when I try to bring the volume up here, it starts increasing the volume. So it's gonna lower to this point, but then start going back up. Let's say I don't wanna do that. How do I make it so that it stays low for a while and then goes back up? Well, let me undo this, get rid of that last keyframe there. So let's say I want it to come here and then I want the volume to go back up. You can just come over here and click the icon again to add a keyframe. But what you wanna do next is move over one frame and then click it again. And then you can bring up your volume here so that way your volume is going to stay, come down, stay low, and then it's going to go back up real quick between two keyframes here. So we play through that. So that's how you can keep the volume at a constant level here and then have it go back up real quick. And this same concept can be applied to both the text and the video clips. If you didn't want something to uh, you know, increase over time, you wanted to stay at a constant level, whether it's your zoom or whatever it might be, you could just add one keyframe, move ahead one frame on your video, and then add another one and then make your change. And that way it's gonna hold your value between two keyframes constant. A few more things just to make a note of is that you can add keyframes to your adjustment layers, which is kind of cool because then you don't have to change your clips and you can copy that adjustment layer all around if you need to, to other clips. So that's a cool feature that you can use. And then also once you get into the color tab, you've got the ability to add keyframes in your color tab through your different grades or different colors, whatever it might be, you can add keyframes there. And if you jump into the fusion tab here, you've got all kinds of ways to add in uh, keyframes and splines and all kinds of stuff over here. Like I said, it gets way deeper. You can do tons of stuff with the keyframes. 
But over here in the edit tab, the basics that we covered is gonna be enough to get you going and help you start making some cool stuff. All right, guys, there you go, keyframe basics. I hope this was uh, some good info for you to help you get going with keyframes, especially if you're brand new to keyframing and animating things on your videos. So if you have any questions, leave a comment down below and I'll do my best to help you out. If I need to make another video about it, just kind of re-explain some things for uh, anybody, I'd be happy to do that. So thank you guys for watching. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. If you liked the video, you learned a little something, hit that thumbs up. And uh, I look forward to seeing all you guys in the next video. Peace.